people believe that the phenomenon of wealthy individuals purchasing enormous super yachts is a relatively recent phenomenon. But the truth is that as far back as the 1920s and the 1930s, some pretty incredible super yachts were already being commissioned. In 1921, Horace Dodge, founder of Dodge Brother Automobiles, took delivery of the 258-foot SS Delphine, built by the Great Lakes Engineering Works. This yacht is still afloat today and is still used as a luxury yacht. Later, in 1930, the Bath Iron Works in Maine delivered the colossal 343-foot Corsair IV, she was built for a certain Mr. Morgan. That would be Mr. J.P. Morgan. And just the following year, the rather less well-known Mr. Hugh J. Chisholm Jr., a millionaire businessman in the wood pulp and paper business, took delivery of the magnificent 243-foot, 9-inch Arras. Aris must have cut a splendid figure with her gleaming black hull and what we can only imagine was an extremely luxurious interior. Chisholm kept her for 10 years, but then this happened. On 1 September 1939, the Nazis sent the Wehrmacht smashing into Poland and into a new world war. For France and England, faithful to their mutual assistance pact with Poland, immediately declared war on Germany. The United States watched attentively as the German armies marched into one country after another, as more and more nations became involved in the conflict. Greece, Russia, Japan. They knew that they too would soon be sucked in and so started to prepare by taking vessels and machinery for use in the war effort. Arras was taken by the Navy and painted military grey. She was armed with two 3-inch gun mounts, six 5 caliber machine guns, two 3 caliber Lewis machine guns, one Y gun, 16 rifles and 10 pistols. She had a crew of 81 on board and was renamed the USS Williamsburg. USS Williamsburg was sent to Halifax, Nova Scotia upon completion of her refit. She arrived there on the 6th of December 1941. Now that date is significant because the very next day Japanese aircraft attacked Pearl Harbor. Now the stories of the Williamsburg during the war period are far too many to go into here how she escorted supply vessels, blowing mines up out of the water, transported one and a half million dollars of gold bullion, saved 15 people from ships that had been sunken by German U-boats and planes. But those are not the things that inked her name indelibly into the annals of history. That happened after the war. At Portsmouth, Virginia, the USS Williamsburg, President Truman's new flagship, has been refurbished as a seagoing White House and a means of recreation for our busy chief executive. Everything is ship-shaped for the president to take over and every comfort provided in his quarters where Mr. Truman can work, relax, or entertain distinguished visitors and friends. Harmony is the keynote on this 240-foot vessel built as a private yacht in 1931. Later, she served as a gunboat and a convoy escort. The Williamsburg replaces the USS Potomac as the presidential yacht. Bon voyage, Mr. President.
Mary Truman loved spending time on board the Williamsburg, and her availability was incredibly well-timed. The White House was undergoing extensive renovation, and so guests were invited to meet and to discuss post-war politics on board the yacht. Many foreign leaders enjoyed Truman's hospitality on board, including Clement Attlee and Winston Churchill. And here they discussed and developed world-changing strategies such as NATO, the Marshall Plan, and the recognition of the State of Israel. Now you'd really think that a vessel such as the USS Williamsburg a vessel that played such an important role in American history would be cared for and put to good use, maybe as a museum or even as a privately owned yacht. Sadly though, that's not the case. Sadly, today, the Williamsburg is found here in La Spezia, Italy, and this is the condition that she's in. It's hard to imagine how a yacht with such a spectacular and glorious history could be allowed to get into this kind of a state. These are the decks that Harry Truman walked on. This is the stateroom that hosted Winston Churchill, where reportedly world leaders drank bourbon and played cards late into the night, where history literally was made. And here in the belly of the yacht, these two Winton diesel engines, each one producing 1,100 horsepower, would have powered the Williamsburg to Iceland, where she assisted in the war efforts, or to Key West with Truman on board as he enjoyed a vacation with his friends and with his family. There's, there's no disguising that the yacht is in a serious state of disrepair, but she can be saved and in fact represents one of the most exciting restoration projects in existence in the world today. Restoring the USS Williamsburg would involve lifting her completely out of the water and ensuring that her hull is made sound. She currently floats but the owners have to pump water out regularly to keep her that way. The superstructure needs to be removed and rebuilt using aluminium rather than steel as used to be the case. New interiors and modern systems such as air conditioning, plumbing and electrics need to be added. And of course, the machinery has to be updated for the propulsion systems.
Now that is a huge amount of work that needs to be done. It's going to be demanding, expensive, time consuming. Massimo, you represent the owner of the Williamsburg. Uh, are you up to that task? We are ready. We are ready, we are ready now because uh, we have the experience to do these things. Our experience uh, uh, is in oil and gas field right now. And you want to transfer this kind of uh, experience on Williamsburg. For example, right now we have uh, three projects that are right, right down in, uh, in Naval Mare and uh, we have uh, about 750 people working on this project. For us, uh, uh, Williamsburg is really little because uh, this experience that we have in oil field, uh, for example, in, uh, in, in these three projects we have uh, about 2,000 kilometers of cable. In Williamsburg we don't have uh, more than five seven kilometers of cable. That means that uh, this experience for us is really little, but that means that we want to transfer the best that we have in oil field in Williamsburg. We have also two experience in, uh, in yacht construction. We build uh, two yacht construction in, uh, in the past three years, and uh, uh, these, uh, these yachts are 50 meters. We work in, in a steel structure for the low level you know, on the yacht, and uh, for aluminum, in up level, we work on that. And we are also able to make all the uh, restructure inside of the Williamsburg. We have the sub supplier that are specialized on this, on this job. The Williamsburg really is at a pivotal point in our history. After cruising with millionaires, surviving a combat role in the Second World War, serving the President of the United States. Now, she could be cut up and destroyed. Or, she could become the most timelessly elegant, historically significant, classic gentleman's yacht to grace the oceans today and well into the future.